weekend or maybe sometime last week you came across a story of some 13 Ghanaians who decided to embark on a journey by road to London from Accra. And I'm sure that the first time you heard about it, you're probably wondering, is this even possible in the first place? How are they going to go by road and how many days or weeks would it take? Well, uh, three of the team members join us today. After they arrived in London yesterday, I miss pomp and pageantry. It was so beautiful to watch. It was, it was exciting to know that we had Ghanaians who were making history and they were doing this for a worthy cause. And so Wanderlust uh, Ghana is joining us, of course, as a team, but I've, I'm sure they'll break it down further to understand exactly what role each of them played. So we have Saka, uh, popular uh, for Saka Homes. Of course, he joins us via Zoom. Good morning, Saka. Good to have you join us. Good morning, Bella. All right, and congratulations to you. But also we have Cecil, and we have Ciprin, and they are also two out of the 13 members who embarked on this 10,000-kilometer journey um, to drive from Accra to London. Good morning to you two as well, Cecil and Ciprin. Uh, good morning. Just correction. Um, um, I'm, it's Kwabna. Kwabna? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. we joined by the fourth member, Kujo Airebi, Okay. Uh, who is Media shy, but today he's decided to honor us with his. <laughs> well, we're honored then, to have then, all of you um, join us this morning. And yesterday you arrived in London. What exact? What time exactly did you arrive yesterday? One p.m. One p.m. Uh, so that's what is that? That's twelve p.m. Ghana time, right? UK time. What was it like? What was the feeling like driving into the UK finally and achieving that goal that you guys had set? Kwajo, do you want to take that? Oh, I think Kwajo Ayrebi should speak since he's the one who hasn't spoken. Yeah. Okay. Kwajo Ayrebi. Kwajo uh, Kasa. By popular demand, they say you should start the conversation. Tell us, what was it like driving into London yesterday? It was great because um, we had been on the road for 16 days. Mm. We were driving on average 12 to 16 hours a day. You know, so like we're all tired, we all wanted to get some rest. But then when we got to the border and saw the Vim Ghanaians met us with, mm. I think we got more energy. Sifred had been exhausted, but as soon as he saw the Ghanaians, he hopped on, jammed on the car, yeah. started waving the Ghana flag. So that was quite exciting. First, so we got excited when we um, saw our people. First of all, whose idea was this? Was it Saka? Was it who exactly? Uh, well, the originators of the, the idea, I'd say it's um, Richard Anim and Kwabna mm. We We are used to traveling around Ghana. We drive around. We, we go to the extent that we have one that we call funeral tourism. Mm. If we hear of a funeral in a place where we don't know the people or even just the... the, the the thought of the town mm -hmm. and make us drive to that funeral just to see the place. So we've been doing this for a while. And one day I got a call from them and they said, we should drive to London. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. why not? And um, yeah, that's Richard Anin. He's one of the people who came up with this. He's the one who's joined us now. I see. So that's how, that's, to the best of my knowledge, that's how this idea started. This what? was in 2019. This was in what, 2019? Yes. Oh. We were actually due to set off on July 23rd, 2020. Okay. But that's the time COVID came and the borders were closed, so we couldn't go. Hands are waiting till now. Once the borders were open, we decided that the next 20, 23rd July mm. will make them. Yeah, but you don't just get up and drive from one country through other countries to another. What was the process um, you know, in order to ensure that you had all the visas, the passes to go through some of these countries? I, I believe it required, uh, so as um, Saka said, um, the genesis was a few years back and mm. the, that core team had done a lot of research. Okay. Uh, it had also uh, been in touch with other people uh, who were enthusiastic about road travel uh, so there was a lot of awareness of what is required across the borders. Mm. Then it's being meticulous. So once things came uh, to the point where we knew that there was a core group going, um, I think there was a lot of meticulous work and planning, particularly by Kwabna Pepra, Teddy Kwabna Pepra, in terms of making sure 
everybody was applying for visas well ahead of time. Okay. Uh, making sure all the paperwork for cars were, were done. And then even more important were, were the trial drives into Togo, into Cote d'Ivoire, mm. to really understand what does it mean to take a car across a country border? Okay. What are the documents? What are the processes? So planning, I think, is key. Mm. And being focused on, an, on anticipating any issues that might come along the route. I see. And what was the real reason why you were embarking on this? Of course, I know that there was an end goal to raise some money for a worthy cause. What was it exactly? So th there are, you know, sometimes people take up audacious ventures to highlight uh, different issues. Mm. Um, at the core of it, we have businessmen, um, entrepreneurs like uh, Saka and Kwabna Prepare, who are real estate mm. uh, developers. And their business, they also want to give it that uh, charitable face uh, to their business to support okay. where the process. So in the travels around Ghana, they identified that digital, the digital divide was actually real in our rural communities. And mm. hence, the thinking was what could be done to actually bridge this digital divide. Mm. Now, I personally had come to know about this um, charity called EduSport Ghana, okay. who have been intervening in terms of the rural communities, setting up low-cost community libraries. They have about 50 of them across Ghana. Mm. So when I was invited to join this expedition, for me, it made sense to then uh, bring in EduSport into the story. Combining it with the vision of the team on bridging the digital divide just made a lot of sense. Mm. So we are looking at EduSport and trying to raise funds for them to digitize their, digitalize their rural community libraries. Okay. But beyond the EduSport story is that wider initiative of how can we intervene in a much bigger way? So there is the setting up of this uh, digital catalyst fund. One million is the ultimate target where we will set up real co community computer libraries associated with rural primary schools, uh, which will then introduce our young growing folk to the digital world, to AI, etc. Yeah. So these are the reasons. But at the end of the day, you have to bear in mind, these are entrepreneurs who are supporting these charities. And mm. we have to remember their businesses as well. Mm -hmm. We have to remember Saka Homes and the developments that they do. Okay. We have to remember the Blade, which is a development being uh, introduced by um, Kwabna Pepra. Okay, I see. That's very interesting. And I see that people are already contributing. But before we get to that, tell us a bit about this journey then. And Cipri, you haven't spoken. Maybe I can come to you because I'm told that yesterday you were already exhausted. Uh, so I can imagine what you all went through before getting to the, um, the UK border. Where did you have, of course, you started from Accra, but I didn't even know that you could drive through here to Morocco and then join the ferry to Spain, etc. Map it out for us. Tell us what it was like and where exactly you had to drive to from one point to the other. Okay, so um, there are several different routes mm. uh, to, to this trip. Uh, in, in the research, uh, we, we um, Teddy had um, done the research and, and we were mapped from Accra down through Sunyane. Okay. That was... That was been initially not supposed to be in the plan, but we decided to start a day earlier mm. so that we don't have a long day on our first day. So we, we rested in Sunyane, uh, uh, and then we continued through the, the Ghana and Ivory Coast border um, or, um, a little bit after Sunyane. Uh, Gonokrom. Go Gonokrom. Okay. Uh, and then through that, um, we also went and we stayed in um, okay. uh, Boake in Ivory Coast as well mm. uh, for and then we continued into um, Mali. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So if I pick up from there, so Mali, at the Mali border, mm -hmm. uh, we were met by uh, a representative of the Ghana uh, embassy, uh, okay. Mr. Kojo Intoko, who facilitated our entry and escorted us to uh, the Ghana embassy in, in, in Bamako. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a little bit of initial servicing of vehicles, uh, spent the night in Bamako, um, and then drove from there to Kais, which is also within Mali. Okay. Now, between Bamako and Kais, that was an interesting road, uh, mm. one of the most difficult terrains that we had to drive on. Mm. Uh, from Kai, we crossed over into Senegal, and I can't stop highlighting uh, yeah. the, how impressed we were with the infrastructure in Senegal, mm. from end to 
exit, we drove on perfect roads, and I mean perfect roads. Mm. Uh, we paid tolls significantly more than the tolls that we would have been used to in Ghana, yeah. but you can't have a complaint when you see the level of infrastructure. Uh, so we then did a bit of a pit stop in uh, Dakar. We yeah. spent a whole day there doing a thorough servicing of the vehicles, changing oil, mm. changing brakes, filters, everything. Mm. Uh, so we did that and then continued from there to Nouakchott. Uh, we went through the Senegal-Mauritania uh, border, Rosso, okay. uh, which posed some interesting uh, challenges for us. Tell us about uh, that. Um, it's, 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 um, Rosso is, I mean, if you were to read about it online, there's mm. a lot of, um, um, people's experiences, not so positive. Yeah. Uh, then I think we experienced a fair bit of challenge there. We spent over eight hours, uh, going through the border procedures mm. and also had a slight bit of encounter with the, uh, with the local, uh, police, uh, mm. which delayed us for quite a significant number of hours. Why? What, uh, were, what were they asking for? No, it's, it's, um, they have a law um, around uh, tinting of car windows. Oh. And unfortunately, a couple of the cars had their front windows tinted, and that's what started that experience. But uh, to be fair, I mean, what, as, as uh, was being said on the trip, mm -hmm. what's the worst that happened, mm. right? So mm. this was a bit of a negative experience, um, I think, yeah, it was part of it was part of the experience that we are clocking down mm -hmm. the sort of lessons that we learn as to how we improve movement across our borders, uh, etc. So those are all part of what we gained from this trip. Mm. From um, uh, we then drove to Nouakchott, where we were hosted extremely, extremely welcomingly by the Honorary Consul, uh, Mr. Felix Hato, okay. who then made sure we had some fufu, banku, okra stew, everything you can think of. And that was around 11 p.m. in Nouakchott. Mm. Yes. Governor, don't forget to mention his <laughs> chef, Manche. 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 I see. Okay, so from Nouakchott, after enjoying that meal and resting, then you drove where? Yeah, Kojo, please pick up from there. So from Norchok, he took us up to the north. We mm. slept in um, a town where he has a fish mill. Okay. Um, you'll be amazed at the sort of business a Ghanaian has set up in that part of the world. It mm. was so impressive. He took us on the tour. He's hiring Ghanaian workers mm. and hosted us to another beautiful dinner that night. The next day, he led us drove us all the way to the border between Mauritania and Morocco okay. and facilitated us crossing the Mauritanian side. Yeah. We pressed on through the desert to the Moroccan border mm. where we had first class um, entry, okay. a first class entry service, quite different to what we had experienced along the way. Mm -hmm. They scuffed our cars, and then we hit and entered Morocco. Yeah. The winds on the desert are quite heavy. Mm -hmm. It was new to us. We hadn't experienced it. It put a lot of pressure on the cars. It, it increased our fuel consumption. Mm -hmm. But all in all, it was an amazing experience, especially the first, um, about the first 800 kilometers of that journey, yeah. where the sea lies to your left and the desert is to your right. Yeah. I think for scenery, it's one of the most beautiful um, scenes I've experienced in my travel life. I can imagine. Great trip. So, so, so between Accra and Morocco, how many days did it take you? Um, I think the, 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 the maybe about a week. Oh, or, or less. Or, or less. Or, or less. less. Now, or less. in doing this, no, no, you... no, no, no. Okay, hey, more. It was more than a week. Because because about 10 days about wow. 10 days um, were you were you not concerned about you know attacks on the road armed robbery all those other things that could probably have gone wrong we thank god that that didn't happen though but did it scare you good. well i mean um in in our in our modeling the reason why we didn't go through burkina faso mm. and use those was because of jihadists and yeah. Wagner and all those people operating those ways. So Mali was the safe bet. But even that, even that there yeah. were 
of our minds uh, encountering uh, these jihadists. I mm -hmm. mean, we saw people on bikes with with guns, but we are sure they were local traditional hunters, so we shouldn't worry. I understand there's a technique where they use cattle to block a road yeah. and then emerge from whatever. I mean, we encountered a few of those, but by and large, it was a smooth uh, experience. The road was terrible between Bamako and, and Kais. Mm. Uh, one other point I want to make about mm -hmm. the Mauritania experience yeah. is that uh, everybody's impression of a country you enter, you, you sort of frame that at the entry point. Mm. Whether it's the air or the, the the land the land crossing, and mm -hmm. um, for me, I'm not sure I'm going through Mauritania anytime soon. Anytime. I don't know about the other. Mm. Um, it's it's and and for if we're looking at an after African free trade, what do you call it, continental? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I, I always jumble the, the 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 abbreviation. But if that's something that is being thought of. Uh, then country border crossings are extremely important because yeah. A, there should be free movement of goods and persons. Um, then you need to make it as smooth as possible for people that cross over. Yeah. Um, the other point that I wanted to touch on was really at the core of what we are doing mm -hmm. is really preparing children or the youth for the future of work. Um, for lots of our rural students, they haven't even come to the table, they haven't come to the party when it comes to digital uh, skills. Yeah. So, uh, Nejis and everything is about uh, supporting rural kids, not forgetting the teachers mm -hmm. who tend to be the media production. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are preparing students for the future of work, the fourth industrial revolution, then Education 4.0 should be topmost or should top of mind awareness when it comes to that. So yeah. a lot of our efforts uh, is really supporting uh, these schools, mm -hmm. special needs get, and uh, rural schools. I see. That's an interesting one. And I, I see that there are already donations coming in heavily um, to support this worthy cause. And it's a step in the right direction, definitely. But let's talk about the vehicles. Oh, first of all, there were 13 of you who started this journey. How many cars did you use? Uh, Saka. We, we started with five cars okay. and 13 people, as you know. Mm-hmm. Entering UK yesterday, we entered with um, four cars. Okay. And um, three and nine of us. Okay, and so we entered UK with four cars and nine of us. What happened to the rest of the people and the extra car? That was the G wagon that didn't make it to the UK, right? Yes. Um, the G wagon had some business to do in Europe. Okay. So. He's in Europe at the moment. He okay. made it. He's in Europe, but he's attending to some business. He's unable to be in UK now. At okay. a later date, he might join us. And the, uh, mm -hmm. um, Richard, uh, Kofi Pepra, mm -hmm. and uh, um, Sewa, the Shikanek, yeah. they left along the way because they had agent work. I think Richard is in South Africa at the moment attending to some work. Okay. Kofi works with a bank in Ghana and he had to be in Ghana. Mm. And she kind of said she had um, clients waiting for their cars and mm. she couldn't spend two weeks out of her shop. So oh. that's how come we, we didn't um, come, all of us didn't get here. Okay, but what happens to the cars? Because there are two schools of thoughts. that some people who think these cars should be auctioned. There are those who think that they should be put in a museum, um, you know, just to tell the story over and over again. What do you think as a team... Or what are your plans for the cars that were used? Uh, well, most of the cars are coming to Ghana, to the best of my knowledge. Okay. And we are happy to partner with anyone who wants us to put them in a museum. Mm. If it's going to raise money for a good cause and there are replacements that we'll use to pursue our daily lives, why mm. not? Because these are your personal cars, right, as a team? Yes, ah. these are personal. So if the museums would like to have it, we are happy if the government offers us new cars and takes these cars. Mm. Did you really, as a team, also get in touch with Kantanka? 
to embark on this journey with you with one of their vehicles. <laughs> so I can like how you're laughing. <laughs> this this yes, I can. This I'm one, we don't want to even talk about it because, you know, we try to seek help and support from various places. Mm. Which I really like to address this one because I might not be able to say it nicely. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's quite a thorny issue, okay. the relationship between uh, like entrepreneurs and various institutions. I see it, I play, I play, I've been running businesses for the last 20 something years mm -hmm. uh, with Normally successful at some, some have been at small failures, but we we still we still move on. And what I find is that a lot of the time corporates become they are like fair weather friends. Mm. They, they 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 go with you when 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 everything is 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 smooth and hunky. Yeah. Um, we we didn't we didn't get the support. We we we, we approached Kantanka. Mm. They, they they didn't make time. Yeah, they didn't get the time. Um, Sorry, I didn't quite get that. You said what? They didn't give you the time to see you. They didn't give us the audience. They oh. didn't even give us the time of the day. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't bother with the meeting. Um, we, we approached Nissan. Mm. In fact, Kwame Prepare bought a Nissan specifically mm -hmm. for this purpose to incentivize and sort of uh, get us some sponsorship. Um, mm. They were like, nah, they, they would offer a discount, but not, not sponsorship. Mm. I think Total and maybe Toyota were also a project. There are a whole host of, uh, but listen, uh, the important thing for us was that uh, we, we've been able to do it. Yeah. Uh, demonstrated our risk appetite as extremely high. Mm. Um, hopefully we've set the tone. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we've put Ghana on the map. Uh, hopefully, a poor kid somewhere who would never have touched a tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, bear in mind, one of our projects we did was in Nkranza, in a farm mm. uh, of, of uh, farmhands, kids of farmhands, about 100 of them. Uh, we gave them devices in January, and within six months, they were assembling ro robots and starting to program with Scratch and so on. So, um, it's all about access, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. If we can provide students, irrespective of where they are based, mm -hmm. with access and inclusion. Let me cite an example of the Manfi girls who have won the World Robotics Competition twice. Yeah, twice, exactly. From Ghana. Yeah. Twice. Mm -hmm. And why? Because they were given the support. So I think if we can democratize access, equity, and inclusion across Ghana in the most remote parts mm. of Ghana, we should be seeing people or kids emerging to go and compete mm. Head off to the Harvards, the Yields, and so on. That's really what excites a, a lot of us. Uh, we, we, we had parents who uh, sacrificed and invested in our education, and really it's about giving back and paying forward. Yeah, definitely. And it's such you know, an enviable feat, I must say. Congratulations to all of you. But there are calls for you to drive from Accra to USA now. Have you seen those tweets? And is it something that you're um, considering as a team? <laughs> Uh, come now over to you since you are the uh, the banker. If you fund it, <laughs> is that even possible? <laughs> it's possible. It Everything is. is possible. Okay. Yeah, it's, possible. Possible. it's possible. Okay. Um, we we have a number of trips planned. Mm. Vivid and in works now is a trip to Cape Town, November next year. Okay. Maybe in future we can look at a drive to. America. Mm. Can we join? If you um, have the money to spend, uh, we, if, you, have, if you can be disciplined and wake up on time, because the regimen we run is a serious one. When we say we are moving at four, it's four, it's not four fifteen. Mm. And you, we are, you are not allowed to say we are rushing you. I see. You have to oh, your, 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 you can't find your wig or your lipstick. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 don't worry. I'll wear my wig in the car. We are going there. We are going there. We are going there. Okay, but, but there. is it open yeah. for Ghanaians to join? I mean, there are a lot of people who are asking if they can join your next trip, um, you know, to raise some funds for this but, course as well. The issue, 
the issue is that it's mm. not really advisable to drive in long convoys. There okay. is really a limited number of convoys that we can have, a maximum four or five cars. Because, I see. yeah, there are security implications, it, it attracts unnecessary attention and so on. So, for now, um, yeah, if people want master classes, they are willing to pay for, we hey. will organize master classes for now. Gladly, think, gladly. You think, you think we amass this, we amass this knowledge for free? Hey. No. <laughs> uh, okay. I am a I am a capitalist. I'm a vampire capitalist. So, um, if if we're going to make a make a buck from it, no. But seriously, if people want advice, uh, consulting, or whatever to to do this, mm. and they can put themselves in teams, yeah, uh, we're happy to provide us. I mean, I hear Ministry of Tourism. Ministry of Tourism has been wants to explore this or something. I mean, mm. yeah. We, oh, we, they we'll they do. Be, have they reached out to you? No, 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 they haven't. In fact, one official said we should proceed at our own risk. What? <laughs> yeah. A government official? What? One yeah. official, when we were... Pre Bella, one thing that we must also bring to bear here is that mm -hmm. we got a lot of discouragement. There was a lot of naysaying. Uh, the, one one official in Ghana in one of the government institu uh, institutions mm -hmm. said to us, ah, but you can take a plane for six hours and go. Why do you want to drive? <laughs> please, please, go and take a plane and go. Wow. <laughs> Even after you explained to the person what the real reason for this journey was. Uh, the, 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 the we kind of... went and asked them for manual, just for curtsies to be extended to us uh -huh. at borders. Hmm. But, you know, now that we have been able to do it and it's caught a vibe and all the news networks have it. Yeah. These same people are busy posting us and saying things about us and retweeting, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. For me, what I've taken from it is that we should all try to the best of our ability to believe in our dreams and live our dreams. Yeah. Yeah. We shouldn't focus on naysayers and people with negative thoughts towards our dreams. If, if we pursue it with, mm -hmm. the, with the diligence with which we have pursued this trip, mm. everyone will achieve their dream. Yeah. Are you open yeah. to an invitation from the president, from government officials, um, to talk further on what can be done moving forward? As a group yesterday, we, we, we had a discussion we don't want to put a color on this trip. Okay. If any invitation is extended to us, we'll make ourselves available. Okay. As long as it's not colored. All right. Well. Our focus is Ghana. Yeah. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I, we could go on and on about this. There's so much I want to hear from all of you. So maybe later, Cyprian, when I tweet at you, respond. Okay. Uh but, 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 but when are you all coming? When are you all coming to Ghana, by the way? Uh, I think everyone what? has different plans. Wow. Oh, okay. You're not coming as a group. Okay. No, no, no. Um, so you, no. Don't, you, don't, you don't want to drive back? Uh, well, we were contacted, <laughs> we're contacted by a big firm in mm. Ghana yesterday mm -hmm. asking if he could they could sponsor us and pay for everything for us to drive back. Mm. Unfortunately, we all have work to do. Exactly. So we'd like them to look at sponsoring maybe a Cape Town or okay. a drive to Iraq or something. Iraq. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to join by you. It's okay. Thank you very much. You can go on your own. <laughs> but but oh thank God. you so much. Thank you so much. I'm saying something. Okay, Cyprian. I wanted us to highlight real quickly the... Okay. the, the, the of why we did the drive, and I'll yeah. let Kwabna quickly highlight that. But yeah. so I, I think we, we don't we, want to lose sight of the um, the interventions that we spoke about. Of course. Uh, we, we're raising, we've received lots of verbal support, mm. uh, but the donations are not coming in. We haven't even done the $100,000 uh, target. How much more than $1 million uh, anticipated digital catalyst fund that we spoke about. Mm. So we urge all your viewers, please, please, every little counts. Yeah. Go to the fantasy pages, chip okay. in your little. We want to cross this. Remember, there's a bigger target. Yeah. Digital intervention on a massive scale across the country. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. And and um, so so you say what page? Okay, what page, one, okay, what page one, do we go one. on go to, to the, contribute? Yeah. Wonderlust. 
wanderlastghana.com. There's a donating, uh, there's a donate button on there. Okay. It takes you to just giving. And I think yesterday we were about 6,000, 7,000. Uh, we really want to hit 100,000 as soon as possible. Okay. Then we move on to the next. Uh, this morning we got um, a call from the information minister, Kujopon and Kroma, after I talked with him yesterday. Okay. He said he'd be raising us some money. As of this morning, he says he has raised us 5,000. So he's oh, going that, to get That's in touch. nice. He's going to try and raise more. That's brilliant. More. And yeah. It worked yeah. Nice that he has raised 5,000. And this is not from the government, from him and his friends. Oh, in, nice. Uh, $5,000. Yes, please. Oh, wow. That's and, beautiful. And, and to make life easier for Ghanaians, mm. uh, the charity Edu Sports has put out their Momo number. Okay. Uh, 059 mm -hmm. 494 Please mention again. 059 So please, every little spare change will go a long way in getting us to the target. Definitely. And we will all definitely contribute to support this worthy cause. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for doing this. And um, thank, you. thank you for thinking about Ghana and risking your Bella. lives for this. Bella. Yes, Saka. Play the game, shout her name, spread her fame afar. Afar, I yes. want to bring to your attention that Pabna is an Accra. Ah. We are indeed the pace setters. We are indeed the head of all the hosts. We are. And the, 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 the St. Peter's boy is going to say something, but don't mind <laughs> Please, <laughs> your microphone is listen, muted, St. Peter's. If you are not an Akura, you are not allowed to talk. Uh, <laughs> mute, mute, mute all <laughs> other schools. We are all muting all everyone else. Play the game, shout the game, spread the paper. From Bella. We are head of the host. Nobody else can. this into a national size and mass quiz. You want to turn this into a national size and mass quiz. <laughs> you people can keep that one. We are a lot when it comes to raising that's money that's for schools. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Boy. Yeah. Thank you. There was a first one at Cracker Boys. Three at Cracker Boys as well. Don't worry. It doesn't matter. It's inconsequential. <laughs> it is Motown and no other institution. Thank you so much. And we'll catch up again. Thank and you. all the best when you're coming back home. All right. Well, Wanderlust is W A N D E R L U S T Ghana. W-A-N-D-E-R-L-U-S-T, Ghana. Just go on that page and you can get the details so you can also um, contribute to this cause. Uh, very beautiful conversation, I must say. Um, but we're going to cross over now to the Ghana's most beautiful delegates. Yesterday, they had a very um, exciting um, first day at work, if I can say that. And they showcased what they were here for. And some of them won awards yesterday. We'll get into all that shortly. Don't go anywhere.